Hey, what's poppin' everyone? Welcome back to Full Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video. Keeping you updated with what's going on, speculating and talking about transfers and football players. Today, we're going to be talking about fullbacks and, of course, the hot topic, Jadon Sancho. Everyone knows what's happening with Dortmund and the fact is it does look like a move is looking more and more likely in January. That's right, not this summer, January. Right then, before we do get into today's content, please make sure that you subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. A quick reminder to do that, click the bell notifications icon. Why not like the video to help me out? Alright, let's get into it. Alright, Chelsea Football Club. They, like many Premier League clubs, are super smart. They are always scouting players. They are always in contact with agents. That's the interesting thing, right? Whenever you see Chelsea linked with a player and you go, oh, it's probably nonsense. It's probably news, like, just whatever made up stories. The truth is, maybe the strength of the link is, but in terms of contact with the agent in the club, it's probably true. Chelsea are often keeping tabs on 30 plus players at one time, you know, open communications with agents. It's just normal in the business of world football. So all these players like Timo Werner, Jadon Sancho, Isco, who Chelsea are all genuinely linked with, they would have had lines of communication with the South West London club. Now obviously, Chelsea, Chelsea fans, Frank Lampard, are all buzzing with the feel-good factor of Chelsea's recently acquired six points away in North London against bitter London rivals Arsenal and Tottenham. Sure, they have mega inconsistency problems in between, and that's what needs to be remembered when everyone's partying, they've just beaten Arsenal and Tottenham away. There are holes in the squad where they need the extra boost of creativity to break down low blocks at home, as well as a glaring left-back spot. But, so let's start by talking about fullbacks. And you know what? Let's tip our caps to Tariq Lamptey, who made his professional debut for Chelsea, or first team debut in the uh, London Derby away against Arsenal, when he came on and played incredibly well. I tweeted some of his stats actually in limited game time. He had immaculate stats. He you know, completed every pass, won 75% of his duels, won 100% of his tackles. He was, you know, he's a little guy, low center of gravity, likes to drive up the pitch, but he wins tackles. He's not the kind of right back that you're going to expect to win aerial duels because he's little, but in terms of pacey, creative, um, inverting inside, and, you know, he played Tammy Abraham in with a key pass that was excellent. He looks like another superb option at right back. So, Chelsea is sorted probably at right back with Rhys James, who's obviously ahead of Lamptey in the pecking order, and as Piliqueta, who can play there, who will become more and more of a utility player, I feel, as Piliqueta throughout this and next season. So maybe the first two right backs you look to would be Rhys James and Tarek Lamptey. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it just shows that Maybe Frank, Jody, and Joe will keep a closer eye on the young lad moving forwards. But that's not the case at left back. Left back looks like a glaring issue moving forwards. Emerson did start the season incredibly well and is a good player, but he's been really poor for Frank Lampard of late. Obviously, Marcus Alonso isn't a left back and we all know Marcus Alonso's faults in terms of being a very slow player, a very slow turning circle and he's sure he's good at getting up and maintaining a high position on the pitch and combining but really that's it for Marcus Alonso and he's getting closer to 30 now. Chelsea will probably look to cash in on him and maybe Emerson. The truth is people like Antonio Conte at Inter, he would take both of them either or. They are wanted players for a left wing back system so Chelsea shouldn't have a problem selling them, but they at least need to get one starting left back in, and that's considering if Azpilicueta can move over, and maybe they even bring through Ian Martin, who's a young promising left back from the academy. If they get rid of those two, they'll need a starting level left back. So who's everyone been talking about? Ben Chilwell. He was a heavily linked player. He's flying high with Leicester. Um, Leicester have dropped a couple, few points recently, and he's had a couple of sort of semi lackluster performances against City and Liverpool. It is City and Liverpool, but everyone was sort of, you know, writing his name in gold. England starting left back, you know, joint left back in the league, or up there with Andy Robertson. That was probably a bit of a push at the moment, but certainly in the top three. Now, the fact how his form might have dipped ever so slightly, and his name stopped being 
published as much in the tabloids. Maybe that bodes well for Chelsea and they have a chance of dragging him away from Leicester, especially now they know they can't win the title when they're just trying to get top four. Ben Chilwell's obviously a superb option and a great left back indeed, but should he be the only option for Chelsea? People talk about Alex Tellers and other sort of top tier left backs around Europe that should be available that could come in and make the difference. In the modern game, right, in modern day football, a good fullback can really make the difference. Remember when Mendy first joined Manchester City? Now, I know he probably hasn't been very good for them at late, but when he was in form, those first few games when he joined and he was playing well, the whole dynamic of the team, of that Manchester City team, changed when it didn't look like they could change anymore. It did, for the better. Now, of course, Mendy isn't offering that to the team right now. It's just an example. But another example is... Trent Alexander-Arnold when he had the game against Leicester when he was absolutely magnificent man of the match performance at right back running a game from the right back position scoring a goal a couple of assists his assist record is off the chain it just goes to show you can have a really really good fullback that is integral in the way you play not only the way you play but how he can affect the game directly himself as an individual. Chelsea have actually got a player that can do something similar like that in Rhys James when he gets more confident, when he gets more integrated into the team, he can be very, very direct, actually better defensively than Trent Alexander-Arnold. I'm not saying he's as good offensively, but he's got immaculate service, he can score a goal, very, very bright future indeed, but Chelsea needs something a bit more promising at left back that can slot in straight away. Whether it's Ben Chilwell, whether it's another target they look in Europe, We'll have to see. Ben Chilwell's probably the safer bet as he is a Premier League proven player and Chelsea will fancy a bit of that right now. It's just whether it's going to be a realistic acquisition due to price. Right then, Dortmund, man. <sighs> they have done it again. They did it with Jadon Sancho and they seem to have done it with Erling Haaland. Scored like 75 hat-tricks this season. <laughs> Obviously, scoring goals in the Austrian League. I don't know what level you sort of benchmark against, but he was scoring hat-tricks in the Champions League. Looks like an absolute beast. Really, really young. I think he's 19 still. Dortmund have bought him for 17 million pounds. One, seven, 17. And with that, people are speculating they can offload Jane Sancho. And think about that. They're going to sell him for like 120 million or something. They just do really good business. So that's superb for Dortmund. So people, are, now you can speculate Jaden Sancho going in January. Now, generally, I've maintained the theory of why would Jaden Sancho want to go when he's having such an immaculate individual season, breaking records as a teenager in Europe or in Germany or the first player to reach double figures and goals and assists in Europe's top five leagues this season, broke a record last season for 15 goals, broke a record this season for 22. Just a record breaker, having a wonderful time in Germany and really looking like he can express himself on the pitch. But a January signing of Erling Haaland does scream of they are replacing someone in the front three. Now Erling Haaland is a centre forward, he's a striker, so you might be like, oh he's going to you know, replace an out and out striker, which they don't really use. Their front three is Marco Royce, Jadon Sancho and Torgan Hazard. Now with Jadon Sancho out, you can just play Marco Royce and Torgan Hazard wide and Erling Haaland down the middle as a starting front three. So speculation has risen a lot throughout the media outlets that Jadon Sancho is off to the Premier League in January. With recent acquisition of Minamino and the general fluidity and how well things are going at Liverpool, you'd say not Liverpool and you'd probably say not returning to Manchester City. To be honest, you'd probably say it's going to be Chelsea or Manchester United. On paper, you'd say Chelsea because he's friends of the Chelsea squad or lads with the Chelsea squad. He's a Chelsea fan. He wants, you know, he idolises Frank Lampard. It all seems written perfectly for him to come to Chelsea. Especially he's from like local ends of Tammy Abraham and there's just a lot of interlocking stuff there. So I joked last time I said that and said, you know, nailed on, he goes to Manchester United. That's the thing, Conte apparently wanted Lukaku, he ended up going to Manchester United. It can happen, but remember Manchester United at that time were quite a, a promising proposition, but at the moment 
it does look like they probably won't get into the top four. They're in for a shout, but it's going to be hard for them. They will have to claim Chelsea's spot. So he'll have to, if he definitely wants Champions League football next season, he'll have to bet on the horse that he thinks will win that, win that race for top four. Man United might say to him, look, you'll play in a devastating attack. Like maybe he'll play instead of Dan James. Playing with Martial and inform Marcus Rashford is an exciting proposition. And you know, if they keep Paul Pogba in the midfield and make another high tier midfield signing, United are good again. Uh, Jaden Sancho is good at counter attacking. If he thinks he's going to be counter attacking all the time in a Solskjaer team, he might fancy that. Still, for my money, it's between the two. Even if he does wait till the summer, well, who knows what can happen. But I think. There's a chance now it will be in January, and there's a decent chance it will be to Chelsea Football Club. But Chelsea are tough negotiators, even though they've already sort of come out and expressed they're willing to break their transfer record. 80 million, say they were thinking, is a lot less than 120 million that Dortmund might be holding out for. Also, there was talks of perhaps a theory of how the deal will be structured. Some say it would be like the Pulisic deal, buy them and loan them back for the rest of the season. But if they've bought Erling Haaland, 17 million, who knows? That might change the whole dynamic of the landscape. And remember, Germany have a winter break, a decent winter break for a player to get bedded in, integrated with the club, you know, learn a bit of how the team plays. It's not like he'll have to be dropped straight back in. That would make them vulnerable. So it could happen. Anyway, what do you guys think? Of course, I'll keep you updated on all parts of the Jadon Sancho story, whether he ends up going to Manchester United or Chelsea, but Dortmund have done some excellent business in acquiring Erling Haaland for £17 million. Get down in the comments below, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this subject. If you've enjoyed the content, please do like the video and remember to subscribe if you are indeed new to the channel. You can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me guys. So you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.